class has begun. This is Minnie Van Lee. I'm your teacher. And today is something really, really special. We've had school all year long. Well, summer's almost here. And I've been teaching you all through the year different things, different ways to be a nomad, and giving you little tips, hints, yes, suggestions, and I've shown you a few things. Done videos show you where I am, how I've got my solar, oh yeah. But today, you get to ask me questions. I'm really happy that summer is here. We're gonna take a little vacation. I'm not going anywhere for you out there in YouTube land, but for my classroom here, yeah. Class is almost over. It's getting warm in here. My goodness, it's like 97 degrees here in Tucson. So, I hope that you brought some questions with you. Now be respectful, you know, don't wanna boop, yeah, <laughs> some of you remember that in Catholic school, right? <laughs> well, don't make me do that here. Just kidding. I would never harm a fly. Well, I will harm a fly. Oh, you bet. I hate flies. How about you? Okay, so who's got a question? Anybody? Anybody? Oh, okay. Go ahead. I have a question. Minnie Van Lee. How do you handle your important papers when you're on the road? Do you travel with them? Where do you put them? What do you do with all your papers that you have to travel with? I've wondered about that. That is an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Yes, papers, important papers. Now, I do carry important papers, but not the most important papers. What important papers would there be really important? Birth certificate, um, vehicle uh, title, um, my diplomas possibly, like diplomas, just important things that you wouldn't want anybody to steal, right? So. I do not carry those with me at all in my minivan, no, because they could be stolen. I keep those with my children. I keep really, really important papers back with my daughter at my domicile. Now, some of you are gonna say, what's a domicile? Some of you are new to this class. A domicile is the address that you use for, um, for laws. It's a state that you follow the laws by would be with your vehicle laws, taxes, wills, things like that, property, things like that. Yeah, that's called your domicile. And I have a domicile and my domicile is with my daughter back in Ohio. So she handles my important papers. Now, let's say that I need an important paper. Ooh, yeah. Well, what I do is I will text her or I will call her and say, hey, I need this paper. Can you send it to me? Well, what I do is I use UPS Store. And let me tell you a little secret about UPS Store. They'll charge about $5. Some, you know, there have actually been other UPS stores that charge more. I don't know why they do but I guess they're franchised out, but usually it's $5. I would rather use them than um, using the USPS, the post office, using general delivery. A lot of times your general delivery in some of the uh, post offices, you can only get your mail, your general delivery at certain times. And no, I just really, I trust UPS store more than I do USPS, but Here's the thing. You cannot send a regular, just a, um, a business letter envelope. You cannot send that through to UPS store. I found that out the hard way. Now they were really kind to me. And what they did was they slipped it into an, a large envelope for me. You have to, when you're using USP store, you need to have them send whoever's going to send you something, have them send it in a regular envelope envelope. Now I did register my vehicle online, but so they're going to send the sticker 
to my domicile address. And then my daughter is going to set, put, slip all of that in an envelope, an 8 by 11 envelope. Take it to the UPS store or the post office. And then they can, because it's a little bit more expensive to send a larger envelope. So I just thought I would uh, let you know that. <laughs> because that's a real tip for you. And then I just call them uh, periodically after I know that my daughter has sent it. And I call them and I say, "Is it? do I have a package for um, Minivan Lee, right? But I need to use um, Lee and then my last name. I need to use that because you do need to show your ID, right? Okay, so that was an excellent question. Thank you. Are there any more questions? Minivan Lee, how long do you plan to be a nomad? That's a really good question. How long do I plan to be a nomad? Mm -hmm. Good question. Well, I plan to be a nomad as long as I can. I can't give an exact time, but here's my feeling. I plan to be a nomad as long as I can. I am 70 years old now. I'm in excellent health. I don't see any reason why I couldn't go another 10, 15 years. Seriously. I would be what? 85, 15 years, I'd be 85. I know 80 year olds that are out here and they're doing just fine. I'm gonna say that possibly I may have a place on a part-time basis. And so that I could travel, you know, and do it part-time. I will always be in a minivan. I know that. I'm small. I can fit in here. Um, I'm only 5'3". I weigh about 130 pounds. And this is fine for me. I do not need to stand up in a rig. That, that That isn't important to me because I can get out and stand up. But I like the stealthiness of a minivan. This is fine for me. I have now, I'll probably all through have a little storage that I rent that I could put some of my things in, yeah. So, because for six years, I really didn't have a storage. Everything I owned was here. I don't mind, you know, paying for a storage. They're not that expensive. A real small one, like a closet. So, yeah. Um, now, where else would I live? Well, a lot of people suggest getting a tiny home buying a tiny home. That could be an option, but I'm telling you what, I'm getting reports on this tiny home little communities that they can be just as bad as renting an apartment. They really can. Um, you know, you got people coming at you. You got people um, wanting to complain, being loud. Yeah, I've heard, I'm starting to hear it all. So I don't know. It would be nice maybe to have um, buy a small home or rent an apartment, a really nice one where maybe a gated community where people are maybe more quiet. I don't know what to, how, to, how to put it um, with better manners and things like that. Because I know in some, I've got video that describes why I actually wanted to be a nomad. Renting can be tough. So if I can afford to rent a really nice place, I probably would on a part-time basis. And then I could actually keep it and then travel part-time, but I always want to travel. So that is an excellent question. Thank you. I plan on being a nomad as long as I can, because I love the life. I love changing the scenery. So thank you. Um, taking another question. Oh, okay. There you go. I have a question. Minivan Lee, would you tell us all if you have any down days? Do you just leave your bed out in your minivan and just lay around all day? Or how do you deal with all of your just relaxing days that you don't feel like doing anything? What do you do? Tell us. Good question. Yes. I have. This is where my bed is. This is my sleeping bag. I don't get inside my sleeping bag. I sleep on top of it. It's a minus 25 sleeping bag, the temperature. It's rated that way. It's very thick and it's very puffy. And I will mention minus 25 degree rating means that I won't die at 20, minus 25 degrees. <laughs> Am I going to be comfortable? Probably not. But I don't know of any time that I would be in minus 25 degrees, right? 
Now, you, I, I've heard they can go up to minus 35. They're really thick. Yeah. So I lay on top of it, and I've got padding down below. I've got a nice carpet, and I've got four blankets, and right now I've got a, some towels down. I've got the towels down so that if I drop crumbs or something like that, or I'm cooking back here, that I can just take them out and easily shake them out and get the hair and the little crumbs out. It's sort of like going like this is sort of like shaking them out. It's like my uh, vacuum. My answer to that is no, I do not leave my bed out ever. Um, even if I didn't feel good, I wouldn't pull my bed out. What I do is if I'm gonna chill out for the day, <laughs> This is how I chill out. I've got my pillows here. Yes, I just do it this way. I've got my coffee. I can drink my coffee here. And this is another thing that I do if I really want to take a nap. This is how I take a nap. Watch this, everybody. Take these pillows. Let me get this down. Here we go. Yeah. I just lay like this and I prop my phone right here. Get my phone and prop it here or up here. And I watch and I eventually just fall asleep. Yes. Now, if I really don't feel well, I really kind of hunker down. I've got a sheet under here unless it would be cold. And I just sort of like... I just take a nap, cover myself up, have a fan going. Or if it's in the winter, I don't need that. I might need a little blanket. I might take a blanket off and I sleep. Yeah, that's what I do. Now, why wouldn't I pull out my bed? Well, because it takes up the whole space here. If I was gonna make some tea or I needed to use my um, pee bottle, go to the bathroom, something like that. No, it would be in my way. I, the only reason this is ever out here is if I am going to go sleep for the night. Now I do take days off. Do I take days off? Yes. They're usually on a Sunday. To me, Sunday is like easy like Sunday morning, right? That song. I, Sundays, just have a feel to it. I just, sometimes on Sundays, I just like to sleep and I don't really worry too much about what I eat. I might kind of munch out with snacks on a Sunday. And uh, I think it was because when I was younger, my mom took Sunday off. She did not cook. Every other day she cooked and dinner was on the table at 5 p.m. Be there or be in trouble. <laughs> yes. Dinner was always at 5. My dad came home from work and he always came right home from work. He did not stop at bars or things like that. He was always home after work and dinner was waiting for him. My mom was a, was a good, she was a good uh, homemaker. That's what she was, a homemaker. So um, raised four children and yeah. But she took Sunday off. Sometimes uh, we would go out. My dad, we would go like, what's in the kitchen? And my dad, he'd lead us out there. And we'd go through the refrigerator and see that we'd make sandwiches. Sometimes my dad, he would pop popcorn the old fashioned way. And um, sometimes we'd just have soup or something like that. But it was my mom's day off from the kitchen. And I think that kind of, um, that attitude and that memory kind of carries over. I could just eat what I want on a Sunday. Yeah. So there you go. There's your question. No, I do not let my bed just, I always in the morning, once I'm up, I fold it up. Now I might sleep in a little bit longer, but once I get up for the day, I want to make my coffee that goes up because my coffee, my, my stove goes right here. Thank you for that question. That was a good one. Okay. Next question. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Miss Lee, do you ever regret getting rid of all of your art supplies when you became a nomad? Well, that's a good question too. I think a lot of y'all know in my classroom, they, you know that I was an artist and I still am. I consider myself an artist. I'm more of a graphic artist now and a filmmaker, but I did a lot of painting in my day and I drawings charcoal drawings, and just all kinds of arts. I did 
there was a time where I actually carved rocks. I got a, I had a Dremel tool and you get the uh, diamond tipped, uh, the, the Dremel piece and you can carve rocks. I would carve big rocks, scenes on them. Yeah, but this is the only one that I've kept. Yes, this is my yes rock. And I've done all kinds of things. Gosh, all kinds of art. I've um, used to make a monk books. It's the first book binding ever. And I learned how to do that in college, make monk books. It's using monk binding. So I've done a lot of different things. Do I regret getting rid of all my art supplies? Not at all, because they can all be replaced, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I would just buy new. What I did with all my art supplies was I gave them to my granddaughter because she's very artistic. She's my grown granddaughter, my first granddaughter. Very artistic. All my children are actually very artistic. And my grandchildren. My other granddaughter that's in Ohio, she's, she's probably about eight right now. She's really going to be a big artist. She really is good into that. They just follow grandma. Yeah. <laughs> And my children were always good, uh, good drawers. They could draw, especially my youngest son. Well, not only that, but my um, second daughter. Yeah, she's a very good artist. And so is my youngest son. Now, um, all of my children. Well, no, I won't even say that. Um, my youngest son and my second daughter, they're very, they're musical. Also, they play guitar and other instruments so yeah they got they're they're more artistic but their dad was a guitar player he wrote music yeah so yeah there you go no i do not regret because i can always get them back and i actually this um do i regret not being an artist anymore uh duh uh no <laughs> Um, I still am an artist. I'm just using graphic arts and it's a big deal to me making films and, and making, um, you know, just videos that are fun to watch for you guys and, and doing some extra little special effects for you. So, yeah. Well, thanks for that question. I love it. Uh, let's see. One more question. I'll take it from y'all. Anybody? Oh, okay. That's a good question. That goes along with the art. Um, how often do I see nomad artists making money on the road? I don't really see it. Um, I haven't really met anybody. I do know my good friend, Mary. Um, I've traveled with her a few times, parked with her. And there was one, I did feature her name on one of my videos. It was last year in Flagstaff. Well, I don't know how much money she makes. I have not met anybody else that makes good money online or selling their wares when they're out and about. So I don't know the answer to that. My answer is I've never met anybody that's made good money out there. And I don't know. Mary's never really shared with me whether she's whether she sells much of her um, art, but she is a good artist. So, well, listen, I thank you all for your questions. I've loved having you in class this year. Class will resume in a couple months, but for you out there, we're just going to continue on, aren't we? We're going to have some fun. We're all going to go camping. It's getting so hot in Tucson right now. I'm ready to go up north, but it still is pretty cold up there. <laughs> so, but once we get up there, there'll be new adventures and we're going to go do lots of camping and do some more traveling. It's a shame though that gas has kind of gone up recently in Tucson right now. It's up to 450. And I'm not seeing it too much higher even in California. And in California where it's really usually high. So Tucson, what's going on? I want to know. I want some answers. Okay, you guys, I love you. It's been fun and uh, we got more fun tomorrow. We'll have more fun tomorrow. But to my classroom right here in Tucson, you guys have a good summer. Don't make me scold you when you get back that you've forgotten everything. <laughs> classroom time with Minnie Van Lee. Don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Go to minivanlee.com for neck gaiters. Oops, I don't have one on today, but I do have exercise videos. Yes. 
uh, go ahead and get those net gaiters. I have one pair of glasses left who's going to be the one to grab those. And the book, How to Live in a Minivan, The Minivan Leeway. Now, I do want to mention, I do have gift amounts on there. Gas is going up. If you want to give me a gift, you don't have to. But if you do want to give me a gift and keep my travels going, because I'm going to be traveling more this summer, go ahead and you can leave me a gift. It's a perfectly safe site, the same as if you were going to buy something on Amazon. So, yeah, minivanlee.com. It's all right there. I love you guys. Bye. Uh-oh, he's going to follow me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What now? What now? Ouch. <laughs> what do you want? You want food? You want to come home with me? Uh, you want to come? <laughs> you want to come home? <laughs> <laughs> he's my he's my amusement. It's my morning amusement. <laughs> go home. Go back to your friends. Go to your friends. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Maybe they'll let me be part of their gang. Maybe there's an initiation. I have to waddle. And chew on people's food on their shoes. <laughs> yeah. Bye. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs>